Today I'd like to talk briefly, and this won't be a long rambling one, about converting your own self-watering planters into ones that will self-tend for you know, days or weeks or even the entire growing season, depending on the capacity of the reservoir. So these are earth boxes. And these are a commercially made self-watering planter that we have had many of them over the years. I think we're down to about five of them now. But for those of you who are familiar with them, they have many, many attributes. They are very productive. Plants grow really well in them. They have about a four gallon capacity reservoir. So at certain stages of the growing season, they will self-tend for, for a long time. The problem gets to be in the later stages of the growth, when you get large tomato plants, or as we'll look at here in a little bit, some our arbor with the, with the beans on it, you would have to come out and water them, fill them at least every day, sometimes twice a day. It's amazing how much water mature plants will use. So we came up with a way to retrofit commercially made self-watering planters, such as the earth box. And the way to do it is to drill some holes. So we need to measure up. I measure up about an inch off the bottom here. And we want to make sure that we're not interfering with some of these molded in supports that hold up the plastic screen here. So we're going to drill a hole on each end for this planter and insert a grommet into each one. Now, there are some ch different choices for drilling a 9 16 diameter hole. The quickest and least expensive is to use a simple spade bit. And these work well enough as long as you drill very carefully. Don't use one that wobbles so that you end up with a, an elliptical hole. And clean any of the burrs. If you have irregular plastic burrs around the edge, we want a nice clean hole so that grommet will seat without leaking. Another option is to use a step bit. Now these bits are stepped in increments in different sizes and I mark above the 9 16 ring with a black marker so I know not to go any further than that but you just drill it up to your desired size and make sure you don't step it up another notch or you'll end up with too big of a hole. These drill a nice clean hole on the entrance and they kind of camphor it a, it a bit. Their problem is the exit, the, the inside of the hole, needs to be reamed out a bit. And that can be an issue if you don't have a lot of space in a planter to work. So what I do with a step bit is, after I carefully drill my hole, I'll take it off the drill and by hand, I will turn it and clean out the holes and camphor them a bit and clean off all those burrs. For most of our drilling, since we can drill a lot of holes in a lot of planters around here, is I bought a Forstner bit. And these are intended to be used on a drill press, and they're for drilling a nice, clean, flat hole, usually for woodworking. But they make a nice, clean, flat hole in plastic also, and I just use them in a hand drill. So they're not the fastest drill, but they're the best choice for drilling a nice, clean hole they leave a very clean hole on the entrance. Uh, again, they can leave a little burr on the inside, and if you have a step bit handy, turning that in there can kind of clean those burrs off. But it's, it's the best choice for drilling a nice clean hole. So let's just quickly drill a couple holes in this earth box. I'm not gonna mess with drilling a pilot hole. This has a pretty nice brad point on the inside to, to start it.
Now I drilled my holes and I have a nice clean hole on the outsides. But on the inside, it leaves a little trap door with the the cutout hang dangling there. So you want to pull that off. And then if you do have a step bit, you can go in from the inside and just turn it. To kind of clean those those burrs off. But if you don't have one of these, again, these these grommets are pretty forgiving. They very seldom leak, especially in a nice thick wall like the earth box. Now that's one thing about these earth boxes, they are very well made. This one's probably 10 years old and they have seen a lot of seasons and they are holding up very well the impressive construction on these things so we're going to install some grommets in here Now, once we have our grommets on each side, when, when we go to set these up, there will be tubing, quarter inch vinyl tubing, that will connect one earth box to the other. So we push it in a good inch, inch and a half or so. And then we need our split tubing because that's what's going to keep the water clean as it passes from planter to planter. So we'll slide that over the ends of the tubing. And it's not fussy, you can just kind of weave it around like that. And then once that's in, then we will install the screen, the plastic screen, with these cutouts. These cutouts that go over these little cages in the corners, and that's where water will wick up from the potting mix that gets pressed down into them. Like that. And then, up under here is the overflow hole. So if we get a, a heavy rainfall, water will never get higher than the top of that overflow hole. So you're not gonna flood your plants. So that's really all there is to it. And now we'll set these up in a daisy chain here, just a little mock-up to show you how we set them up and what it's gonna look like. So here we have all three of them set up with the tubing going between them. And the fill tubes that come with the planters, we're gonna stick back in there. Not that we're gonna need them for adding water, but they plug up that hole that would otherwise be in there that would let potting mix get down in the reservoir. And they also probably give a little bit more air going down in there. So then we hook it up to our float box, which is then connected to our water supply. Now let's wander over and I'll show you one already set up here and I'll show you why it makes sense to have a reservoir and not have to add water directly to our boxes every day. So if you watched the last video about non-circulating hydroponics, I showed you this, but it's grown even in a week since I filmed that. So here are two earth boxes and they're connected by tubing laid on the ground from one to the other. And then in this float box is the float valve that regulates the water level and it keeps the water about 
an inch and a half deep and then we just use this tote as our reservoir and at this point I really wish I had a rain barrel connected because I have to add water even with a 20 gallon tote about every other day right now so next season I think we're gonna hook a, a rain barrel up to the cabin there and gravity feed over here it's about 84 degrees today and there's this smoky haze from wildfires in Canada it's just kind of an eerie day but that's it for now so this is Mark again from Backwood Basics wanting us to grow together <laughs>